The medical CT as an institution has always been driven by its uh, uh, vision uh, to acquire and achieve uh, leadership in healthcare, not only nationally, but actually internationally. This has always been like this uh, as for as long as I can remember. But uh, especially when I was medical director of this institution, I realized that to be uh, a leader in healthcare, one really had to be well known as well, not only in terms of its research uh, uh, work, but also in terms of the outcomes and output of the research. And so that's when we started really thinking, how do we compare medical city with the best uh, abroad, especially in terms of research like the Johns Hopkins Hospital, the Cleveland Clinic and the Mayo Clinic. And I really remember uh, having been observing one particular scientist, an innovator, and an awardee, and an inventor, Dr. Raul Distura, uh, how we were so lucky at that time that he was with us as a member of the st uh, staff of the Medical City. I remember uh, talking with him uh, sometime in 2015 or 2016, but I think the most important thing is that that talk led to the eventual creation and launch of the uh, uh, Clinical and Translational Research Institute, or CTRI, in April 2017. I would like to ask him now, uh, Dr. Raul Distura, how this came about, because uh, my memory uh, was kind of vague, of how eventually we moved forward from just the concept of really establishing research, the kind of research that uh, people really earn respect for in Medical City, until the time that he eventually agreed and he eventually uh, came up with a very nice and impressive uh, launch of the CTRI in, in April 2017. So Raul, maybe uh, we can tell them the story of the CTRI, how it started. It started with an idea coming from you, one of those uh, nice dinners. And we were discussing about how can we increase the level of healthcare at the medical city that enculturates the value of research activities in healthcare delivery. Mm -hmm. And we were discussing about not just creating an institution, but actually building a culture. Mm -hmm. Because for an institution to become a new phase no, in terms of a research, uh, a research phase of the institution, it requires enculturating the values of doing research that before it was like a dichotomous idea mm -hmm. that you do research and you do clinical work. Only one or Only the one other. or the other. Never but both. Never both. Mm -hmm. But we feel and we strongly agree that there is always research environment mm -hmm. in every clinical work that we do. We just need to tap them mm -hmm. and make them grow and provide an environment that allows these ideas to transform into something innovative that ultimately puts our patients in a better state no, than the day they entered our institution. So the Clinical and Translational Research Institute, the operative term there is translational, mm -hmm. which means you, are, you have an idea that you know can help a patient get better, but you need an environment, a tool, a pathway, that can bring this idea into something that is real, tangible, something that you can give to your patient. And uh, the pathway to that takes a lot of avenues to focus on, and that includes building an institution, building a facility, and started enculturating the, the men and women of the medical city whose main task really is to provide care to our patients, both in wellness and in illness. Yeah. I was, uh, I think, I think the, the, the environment that we wanted to create and maybe our collaboration, which you said started with the dinner, <laughs> uh, actually could not be more physical yeah. than when we moved to the 17th floor. Yes. Uh, and as medical director, my office was on the, uh, on the 17th floor at the uh, West Wing and your office was on the other side, the east part, and we were together. Yeah. Uh, and you started building your uh, team, uh, and then eventually uh, we, 
we thought of those ideas and then eventually we had the April 7, 9, 2017 launch. Uh, the, the culture, the, the, what you're saying is the, the pathway or the journey to discovery. It starts with questioning and mm -hmm. uh, finding ways. Uh, why are things the way they are and why cannot we do something else? No? And that's the culture that is still ongoing. It's something that we need to, uh, to really push. But, uh, you know, tell me, tell me uh, more about the things that really got into uh, your group. Uh, in terms of creating that group leading to the April uh, 2017 launch? Um, it was a very exciting journey, actually, meeting my team for the first time mm -hmm. and how it's, it's like a constellation of the stars happening at the same point mm -hmm. in time. And they were all bringing out fresh ideas on how mm -hmm. to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started looking at several aspects on how we can actually bring the institution, the institute to, to life. You know? So we start off with building a team. Yes. Which for me, it's, it's very important. You know, the, the, the uh, clear departure or a movement onward, a, a more forward movement from the usual idea of research that we are familiar with or used to, uh, basically the research uh, that is generated by the residents as part of their uh, training program. Uh, requirements, no, uh, was the the fact that you actually really went into really defining what the CTRI is going to be. You mm -hmm. talked about funding, uh, yes. getting international grants. Mm -hmm. You talked about uh, really getting the uh, the uh, journal, mm -hmm. the final journal, mm -hmm. to really be uh, registered. And uh, the the fact that if a research, which may not necessarily be uh, really a clinical but can be leading towards uh, devices and innovation, mm -hmm. getting into actually uh, 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 having them uh, registered in the uh, these, uh, intellectual property. Inte intellectual property. Yeah. Maybe you can le really expound on that because that really was a clear sign to me, at least, that you were able to really kind of define mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the, the pathway to uh, the kind of research uh, institute that we were talking about. So one thing that makes it very difficult for clinicians to transform their ideas mm -hmm. into translational medicine is the efficiency of the research process. Okay. So we started building research management system using the power of communication technology, online submissions. Second is the ability of the institute to actually be able to absorb grants. No? And that would require registrations, both re international and local. So I'm very pleased to tell the, our community that the CTRI also actually has federal-wide assurance number that can actually receive grants from the U.S. at the same time from the European Union, and also can receive grants from the local funding agency like the OST. So research efficiency is important. Second is building the skill set. So sometimes researchers, want, I mean, prospective researchers no, wanted to go into that particular area, but they don't know how to go through that. So the, the most important thing there is retooling our clinicians on the research process. And part of that is giving a structured learning program that allows them to generate from needs assessment because it all starts with identifying what the clinical need are, needs are and then converting them into a research question whether is it possible mm -hmm. to, actually to actually identify, address, treat, evaluate, survey, depends on the research design these needs are. And then after uh, asking the right questions, then the methodological process follows through and so we created also enabling mechanisms for them to properly design it by getting experts in the field of research methodologies. Mm -hmm. In fact, we actually had an in-house biostatisticians mm -hmm. just to help them calculate those very, very crucial samples. The, uh, the Department of Medical Education actually was so ec ecstatic about that because uh, for a while in the past, the residents were on their own looking mm -hmm. for their own uh, statistician. No? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and. Immediately after that one-year program, 
everybody was commenting how high level already the research outputs mm -hmm. during our first research week celebration under CTRI management. Mm -hmm. And the level of research outputs were so good that we were inspired to say, we should start telling people about this research output. Hence the birth of the first Medical City Journal mm -hmm. uh, that puts together all of this research work of our staff and scientists and clinicians at the Medical City. But let me uh, stop you there because uh, even that journal uh, required you uh, demanded from you uh, the kind of quality mm. and standards uh, that uh, you, you you insisted should be there, and you th your choice of the editor in chief oh, was yeah. as well. You, you should actually talk about that. Uh, that would really uh, be worthy of the uh, the position that the journal has acquired and, and the uh, registration and its position in the uh, in the in the uh, national uh, library of. Uh, I am very pleased that one of our best uh, scientific writers is mm -hmm. also here at mm -hmm. the Medical City, Dr. Sabil Abad. Mm -hmm. And I knew that the challenge is so big, but she took the challenge, took the challenge. and transformed the Medical City Journal into a peer review journal, which mm -hmm. is very crucial. And that not just for the sake of publishing paper, but actually publishing quality outputs, which means that it's peer reviewed, uh, and, and vetted whether the, the, the research outputs are actually worthy of publishing. Mm -hmm. Second is get, because when you, we, we conceptualize the Medical City Journal, it's just about creating the journal, but it must have its own pathway as well. Mm -hmm. Our pathway for it to be internationally listed, it starts with building the requirements inside the hospital, mm -hmm. and that is regular publications, peer review, and an online journal holdings that requires specific registrations. Mm -hmm. So right now, uh, it's registered in the ISBN, and then it's also now registered at the Herden Publications, which okay. is the national publications yes. of, of the country on scientific outputs. So You know, Raul, I was actually uh, kind of a biased mindset that I had when, when you did tell me that your choice for the editor-in-chief was Dr. Saibel Abad. I was not really uh, aware and familiar of uh, her, her uh, writing skills. But I met Saibel for the first time when I was in that mode of really trying to compare and trying to aim uh, high for the medical city when uh, we visited Mayo Clinic. And uh, in Mayo Clinic, uh, we, we, we were actually entertained by quite a number, uh, a couple of Filipino scientists there. And then Saibel Abad was there. Mm -hmm. And th that's how I met Saibel Abad. No? And he was, uh, she was also with Mark Coven, uh, who also I said, now you should, when you come back, you should also join us. And he's here with us. So we are, in effect, the, in the bigger light, we are also uh, uh, trying to expand uh, our our capacity. You know. There are other people that uh, you included, you know, leading to the uh, launch of the CTRI in 2017. You you did talk about this young guy who was you said was stalking you, <laughs> and I think that would be a good uh, story to tell. Yeah, um, I've been receiving this email from this young guy mm -hmm. and asking me if I can mentor him or he can join my research program. But to be honest, I've been receiving so many emails. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, You have uh, so many other fans, in other words. <laughs> requesting to be under mm -hmm. from here, yeah. from India, and all the other. Uh, but at that time, I was really o overwhelmed already yes. with people. But this guy was more persistent. Yeah, he was persistent. Uh -huh. And then I was, I was then the vice president of the National Research Council. And I asked the board member from the University of Santo Tomas and said, do you know this guy? who uh, he think he's a graduate from, from the University of Santo Tomas. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, she is the number one he's graduate he. of the entire university. The university, Magna Cum Laude, right? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. The interesting story yeah. with this guy is yeah. that I, I felt so bad. So I mm -hmm. sent him a message. I said, come to Medical City. But I just let him follow me around. Yes. But unbeknownst to him, I actually just observing. Yeah, because I didn't remember that. We were already on the 17th floor and there was an activity and you did call me and say, uh, Dr. Ramos, you know, there is this guy who has been stalking me, but he's here and that's the guy, you know, and I think, and I said, 
you know, apparently uh, yeah. the, the, the drive is there that we should really hire him. No? And, uh, and then you passed by uh -huh. and you just said regularly, you start tomorrow. And then you start, went down the stairs and you, I saw his <laughs> face, he was just like, <laughs> that's it no interviews he didn't yeah, yeah, yeah you know that uh, was yeah. the interview already <laughs> and so far i have been so lucky about uh first impressions uh when when i i i feel that this guy or this woman uh really is qualified you don't you don't beat around the bush anymore and they just hired them right away and uh, that recently also happened no but then you have other people yes. coming in yes. maybe you can talk about them so also. uh so once uh, Mark joined the team, he mm. kind of helped me get... Mark Karaskal. Mark Karaskal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the only staff I had at the time was, was Apple. Apple, Regalisa. Uh -huh. And uh, so it's become like a three-man three uh, institute. Yeah, uh -huh. And then I said, this is, my, this is our vision for the Clinical and Translational Research Institute. Mm -hmm. And we started looking for the team leaders for each of these mm -hmm. uh, programs. So I was looking at CTRI as one that can handle clinical research mm -hmm. work and at the same time can do fundamental research mm -hmm. activities mm -hmm. in one institute okay and that requires two people that will uh, uh, make it work mm -hmm. so luckily well i was i think presenting my research work at university of bristol this young ph post grad phd mm -hmm. uh, uh, individual was uh, planning to go back to the philippines mm -hmm. because he fell in love with a Filipina surgeon. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's a Filipino, no? He's a Filipino. Uh, he, is, yeah, yeah. he is American, German, Filipino. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, he was doing a postdoctoral degree at the University of Leeds, no? mm -hmm. working on state of the art mm -hmm. microscopy. No? And uh, he joined our conference at the University of Bristol, and we started talking about when are you coming back to the Philippines? Mm -hmm. And then he said he's interested. And I said, when you're in Manila, you come to my office, mm -hmm. and that's how it all started. Yeah. The birth of the Biomedical Research Unit, unit. headed by Dr. Roland Remini. Remini, and uh, that, that kind of stoked my interest and eventually led my to my frustration because it took a while for us to finally uh, uh, really finish the construction and to acquire the necessary equipment. No? Uh, well, of course, you know, we have the uh, pandemic. We had yeah. some um, uh, issues with our resources. Understandably, uh, I had to kind of pay myself to, to lower down my expectation. But now, that's what I would like to say, that finally it's over. Yeah. And finally, we're going to launch the BRU or the Biomedical Research Unit yes. uh, together with your CTRI lab yeah. no? uh, on uh, March 25. And well, while we were doing that, mm -hmm putting the concepts of the biomedical research unit the first the other unit was already moving along mm -hmm. as fast the clinical trial unit mm -hmm. the background here is the medical city uh, before was not the go-to hospital for clinical trials mm -hmm. because of the difficulty in processing yeah. papers yeah the bureaucracy, so bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. we started off as the least go-to institutions for clinical trial mm -hmm. and recently uh, we were dubbed as the most go-to clinical trial uh, uh, programming for all of this industry who wants to do uh, clinical trials in hospitals. Maybe I, let me stop you there. Uh, because uh, when I was uh, with the pharmaceutical industry, uh, I, I established relationships with or established uh, transactions with, we, c we call them CRUs. Uh, What's a CRU? Clinical Research Unit. Clinical CROs. Research, like, like the quintiles and all these yes. other things. CROs. And they always uh, would share with me their difficulties about getting uh, their researchers approved early, go, going through all these things because they had to go through all the processes. And that's precisely why uh, it was kind of difficult at the time. I think that's the context that you'd yeah. like to say. Yeah. And now the CROs themselves are the ones that are already going to CTRI. Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay. So the, the Philippine Clinical Research Professionals Incorporated mm -hmm. actually dubbed the medical city as the go-to institutions for multi-site clinical trials mm -hmm. because CTRI facilitated the connections of all of this medical city network mm -hmm. hospital mm -hmm. as part of the CTRI. Mm -hmm. And this is headed by uh, Mr. Edgar de Mugila. Yeah, he joined, who, he joined us. Uh, he, came, he came from the industry. He came from the industry. Yes, that's right. He has years of experience yes, uh -huh. as a clinical research manager. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, in fact, when I was still a fellow, he was actually one of those clinical research monitors. That's right. And I was uh -huh. doing clinical trials mm -hmm. still. And then uh, I we, we discussed about the vision and how we can actually transform the way we do things in terms of clinical research, clinical trial management. Uh, so the CTRI became now a gateway mm -hmm. to make sure that all of the documents are in place mm -hmm. so that when the ethics committee receives the documents, it's less paper back and forth. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we were able to shorten the turnaround the time process, from yeah. months to months to uh, 30 to 60 days, mm -hmm. actually. Just yes. to put a perspective, the global mm -hmm. turnaround time is 60 to 90. Okay, yeah, so, so that's impressive. We are actually yeah, making we are there. Uh -huh. so that it's easier for them to say yes to us. And part of that is also we are always doing receiving feasibility study requests mm -hmm. whether this particular clinical trial can be done at the medical city. And the team has actually been doing that mm -hmm. uh, at a systematic way, mm -hmm. as opposed to before. Uh, pharmaceutical industry will approach a certain doctor mm -hmm. and the doctor has to do it all by himself. That's right. As opposed to now, CTRI can do the entire feasibility and identify yes. the likely principal investigators for this clinical trial. And for me, research efficiency and management is important in managing uh, clinical trials because of the strict regulations of good clinical practice, mm -hmm. GCP uh, regulations yes. for uh -huh. good clinical mm -hmm. trials. And this led to an idea of creating several Network. CTRIs. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and really, finally, uh, really pursuing our vision that uh, this was not going to be a standalone, that we are finally, uh, and uh, at the time I, I was already CEO, uh, to really, really get integrated into the entire enterprise. Yes. And you, you talked about uh, going to Iloilo, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we had a uh, uh, visit to Iloilo, it's very exciting to go to Medical City Iloilo aside from the food is really fantastic in <laughs> Iloilo. That's a good incentive for us to go as well. Mm -hmm. But I met also amazing teams who are as passionate as the team here in Ortigas. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, they were a three-man team, a three-person team. We call also. this kindred spirits. Kindred spirits. Yes, that's, that's right. right. Yes, that's right. Uh -huh. And their passion is also way off the chart. Mm -hmm. And I could tell you, know, you just plant the idea, mm -hmm. and they executed beautifully. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, it feels like it was a collegial competition. Uh -huh. How many clinical trials one CTRI can handle mm -hmm. versus ours here? Mm -hmm. And to some basing. Uh, uh, work and we even uh, supported the mm -hmm. launch. Mm -hmm. at, uh, they had this collaboration with the University of San Agustin, San Agustin I think. Agustin. Yes, uh -huh. and that collaboration expanded all the way here. Mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. to you see, uh, th those those kind of things, uh, Raul, no? the the research aspect, the way that we actually grow. I think the soul of the medical city sometimes is not seen or appreciated because we we look at we look at it purely from all clinical, you know, mm -hmm. but the uh, collaboration that we've had with uh, other uh, institutions outside beyond Medical City is the one that I think should be appreciated and should be actually highlighted as well. Yeah. Because when we talk about basically running the organization, uh, these, these things or these achievements are oftentimes overlooked. You know? yeah. Now, there was uh, Another one, uh, you were talking about Iloilo and then you moved on to, to, Clark. to Clark, yes. Uh -huh. So CTRI Clark was also uh, opened up uh, over a, more than a year ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks also to the support of the CEO there, mm -hmm. uh, which opened up doors to build a clinical and translational research institute of Clark. And it's a good area because it, it is Central Luzon, yeah. right? That's right? And they are in the best position mm -hmm. in the years to come. Mm -hmm. Knowing the projections of Clark, mm -hmm. I believe CTRI Clark will become a giant mm -hmm. institution mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the next mm -hmm. couple of years now. So, mm -hmm. um, and I'm glad that uh, they are also visionary in that yeah, aspect. That's correct. Yeah. It's just important that we build a team, no? yeah. the, the team there and the team elsewhere. No? But of course, we still have South Luzon mm -hmm. and we still have uh, Pangasinan yeah. to, uh, to deal with that. But uh, other than this, uh, now you have uh, Edgar Di Magiba, who, Di Magila, who actually provides uh, 
kind of a balance, no? Because he is more senior and he has the experience. Yeah. Yeah. And when I deal with Mark Carascal and the younger group as well, for instance, when I talk to them, and then Edgar is there, you know, Edgar, you see that Edgar provides a kind of a little composure, yes. a little stability, you know? Uh, these younger guys are a little more impulsive, no? And a little more driven, which is good, no? It's a good balance. N now, th there's another one that you, remember Raul, I just like to uh, emphasize this, no? That whatever manpower you ask for, I never said no. Thank you. Yes, and, and, really and, and so let's talk now, uh, Dr. Barbara Ronquillo. Yeah, so in the final cycle of research and development is the generation of intellectual property mm -hmm. or innovative ideas. It is one way also of protecting, acknowledging the amount of work a scientist did for that particular mm -hmm. innovation. And part of that is protecting that work mm -hmm. through intellectual property management. So I needed another office that will be able to bring these translated technologies or fundamental uh, discoveries to industry mm -hmm. so that it can benefit more people mm -hmm. once the technology is actually scaled up. Mm -hmm. So we have to create our own tech transfer and business development office. Yes, that's right. And we call them the Medical City of Ventures. Ventures, yeah. Enter Dr. Barbara Ronquillo, yes, uh -huh. who has who is a clinician at the same time has training in business degree. Mm -hmm. He was my classmate at the Ateneo. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and she's very driven and very passionate mm -hmm. about things that are given to her. And she created also her entire office of the Medical City Ventures, having her own set of patent search officers uh -huh, uh -huh. and building the infrastructures for tech transfer mm -hmm. from Medical City to the world. That's correct. Okay. So we needed that window uh, so that any scientist that will work on fundamental innovative technologies here at the Medical City there is a ready pathway from idea generation mm -hmm. to commercialization. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it is my dream in the future that... The and I like to listen to that dream because it always starts with a dream, Raul. Yes. Okay. It is my dream in the future that the Clinical and Translational Research Institute will be able to generate spin-offs, mm -hmm. start-ups, yes. mm -hmm. spin-outs, mm -hmm. And licensing agreements mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. the medical city mm -hmm. ventures that can that can generate Filipino mm -hmm. technologies serving the Filipino needs, mm -hmm. right? and for me that's very important because here and uh, you are perfectly in a position to say that or even to claim that because I think you are the most awarded <laughs> Filipino innovator. Oh. I'm not sure, but there are other <laughs> scientists. Because I always remember that a, a year, usually you always get an award, an international award yeah. as well. And that's precisely why it also lends uh, prestige and uh, relevance to, to whatever it is that we're doing because of the believability, you know, the, the uh, respect that you yourself actually have uh, achieved uh, coming from the research uh, community that you have. Now, one of the things that... Uh, Apparently, you, your entire infrastructure is uh, undergirded upon is this issue of innovation. And uh, I, while we have the Center for Innovation and Lifelong Learning, uh, there has to be a, an integration in a way, a blending, so that we actually develop the culture of uh, discovery, uh, the culture of questioning the status quo, of uh, making observations and moving from observations to, to that. No? And that's my challenge to the members of the SIL, uh, the Center of Innovation and Lifelong Learning, because there is really uh, an interconnection uh, of the things that we are trying to do for the Medical City Institution, and this is across the enterprise at this time. Now, Raul, finally, you have now uh, the ventures, you have now the clinical trial unit, we, you, you now have the biomedical research. And after all the months that I have been so frustrated because I thought that we could really launch this much earlier, you have, of course, uh, the, uh, the journal. No? You have your microsites as well. You have your, uh, your um, collaboration with the uh, academe. Yes. You have your collaboration, I think, with the, the PCHRD and the, the, the DOST. No? 
And, uh, and so apparently, it's just a matter of time and uh, that we move. You have your staff with you. So let's talk about now about the BRU at the lower ground. Well, one thing I learned in my research career is that perseverance is a virtue. Mm -hmm. And things happen in its own time. Mm -hmm. So we've had so much challenges along the way. But if you persevere, you get there. Mm -hmm. And finally, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to launch the Biomedical Research Unit. unit. Mm -hmm. Now, what is this BRU or mm -hmm. the BRU? Mm -hmm. We call it the BRU. If you have young teams, they can really use terminology. They're so That's sexy right. and yes, exciting. Yes, yes, I'm yes. already an old log. No? <laughs> these kids now, they call it the BRU Cafe or the oh. Biomedical Research Unit. Why did we use the word cafe? Because we envision that this is like an environment conversations people are relaxed yes share their ideas yes yes for convergence yes collaboration that's right and generating uh, uh new knowledge new knowledge for mm -hmm. me uh the heart of innovation mm -hmm. is challenging mm -hmm. the status quo always looking for better ways of doing things so the biomedical research units uh, uh is a facility but I would not. I will not harp around. We have good equipment. We have good this. We yes, have good that. yes, yes. But what the BRU actually represents? Mm -hmm. uh, for me, the biomedical research unit represents idea generation. Mm -hmm. Represents wondering. Mm -hmm. Represents marveling. Mm -hmm. Wherein clinician can actually tap into their childhood mind mm -hmm. that's always asked mm -hmm. questions wonder mm -hmm. the that drive to know what it is mm -hmm. it's actually here it's in every person mm -hmm. that's why it's 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 very difficult for me to understand why there seems to be a mindset separation mm -hmm. of research and clinical practice. correct mm -hmm. they're both in the same yes uh, mm -hmm. mode. patient care patient care mm -hmm. so so the biomedical research units has two big programs mm -hmm. that we are launching that addresses a very important need in the country. Mm -hmm. One is the problem on antibiotic resistance. Mm -hmm. As a clinician in infectious disease, I see people, despite receiving a battery of antibiotics, dying because no drugs are working. Available. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, you would say, Let's look for new drugs. Mm -hmm. Let's look for new chemical entities Correct. to mm -hmm. develop antibiotics. Mm -hmm. But then another person could say, why stick to antibiotics? Exactly. Because we, that has always been a problem. Uh, the abuse of the use of antibiotics uh, has, has caused all this, right? So it's like the question would be, are you sure antibiotics are the only solution mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. managing mm -hmm. antimicrobial mm -hmm. resistance? So you start asking that question. Is it possible for an alternative choice? Mm -hmm. So that's why we we looked at all of the other alternative choices, and then we came up with this uh, program, which is the Bacteriophage program. Yeah, the phage, the, the phage, phage uh, program, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, which is actually close to my heart. And Mark mm -hmm. is a microbiologist. Yes, as well. that's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we now have a visiting scientist in that area mm -hmm. that will write an entire program mm -hmm. just for the maybe you should name uh, because uh, i've seen uh, those visiting scientists that you have yeah so yeah. we have from uh for the biomedical research unit we have dr um uh and abelardo abelardo the, yes. the 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 guy from uk yes yes the uh -huh. guy from uk who uh -huh. Was a very interesting story. Uh, where oh, he has delivered uh, quite an impressive talk here uh, concerning the uh, the, the trachea. Three, yeah, the trachea. Young, yes. old lady. Half of the entire trachea was eaten by Mycobacterium mm -hmm. tuberculosis, mm -hmm. and it was already surgically problematic correcting the deficit. Mm -hmm. But then they harvested the cartilage and then let them grow and mm -hmm. print them and then put it here. And it's perfect. And the lady can talk again. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. The other visiting scientist, uh, uh, Professor Donna May Papa, mm -hmm. whose passion is in five star. Okay. From the University of Santo Tomas. Santo Tomas. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. she agreed to be our visiting scientist here okay. to launch the program of bacterial five star ther therapy for of medical importance. Mm -hmm. Because she's also working on others, mm -hmm. environment mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of these things, but. 
in this particular area, you want to have a very focused, mm -hmm. racial, sharp mm -hmm. program mm -hmm. to discover, no, not to discover, to rediscover mm -hmm. you know, uh, patch therapy in relation to the management of multidrug resistant organisms. Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe in the future, as our scientists keeps on working on mm -hmm. the fundamental science work, mm -hmm. this it can be transformed now into a therapeutic option That's right. for mm -hmm. patients who are no longer responding to antimicrobial mm -hmm. therapy. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, that's, that's very exciting. Okay. You know? mm -hmm. And then uh, Dr. Uh, Ed Abelardo, who is a, an ENT surgeon, mm -hmm. did fantastic work in cellular technology, mm -hmm. you know, which is why we launched the second half of the BRU project. Yes, uh -huh. the three yes. Uh -huh. We are trying to develop three-dimensional structures of the mm -hmm. organ system, mm -hmm. uh, putting together all our experience in that area. And also integrating, remember, our regenerative medicine laboratory. Yeah. So there is now uh, a collaboration. We talked about innovation uh, as uh, an institutional uh, vision uh, and value that we would like to pursue uh, for everyone. Then we have the CTRI. We have now the Biomedical Research Unit. And then there is now uh, apparently a lot of molecular uh, integration of the molecular science. And then we go into uh, regenerative medicine. So these are all going to be connected. And you are also uh, kind of uh, heavily uh, uh, involved in the Philippine Genome Center. And we, we, we see the full integration of all this with the research mind, and then we move forward. For me, to accelerate research in the Philippines, it should not be hampered by institutional wants. Yes. Uh -huh. And transdisciplinary approaches is the thing now. No single scientist can fathom the entire problem mm. of clinical or of a health problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It always requires the inputs of everyone's expertise. In An open mind, right? yes. Open, uh, mind. open mind. So if you think that you can do research and generate best outputs by working in silos, mm -hmm you are in a different universe mm -hmm. because here in, the, in this country with limitations and resources yes. mm -hmm. collaboration is the way to go that's right uh -huh. and uh, i am an advocate of collaborative research i want people to bring it in yes mm -hmm. put their own mark mm -hmm. in the program and as people, as the entire world come in, uh, we, we, we are going to have uh, the facility for funding right yes uh -huh. and grants and ultimately we all just want the same thing. The same thing, yes. The welfare of our patients, mm -hmm. the health of our community, mm -hmm. and the health of our nation. Okay. I remember my mentor mentioned, uh, which I will not forget, that health is a universal human value. Mm -hmm. No one prefers to be ill That's right. mm -hmm. than getting better. Yes. It transcends geopolitical mm -hmm. boundaries. It transcends religion. Mm -hmm it transcends political affiliations mm -hmm. because everybody wants to be healthy unless there's something wrong with you that you <laughs> prefer to be sick and, all the time. and everything is interconnected no yes. now imagine if we will use health as our universal compass yes for everybody mm -hmm. should it be easier for us to come together if we use that as our central i i that's a, that's a question that the answer is very clear <laughs> no? and and so with that raul uh just like to say that uh, we have every reason to be so excited uh, we are, I have personally uh, every reason to be proud that finally uh, we see uh, the complete circle. The circle that uh, we have been talking about, you know, uh, uh, getting drunk over wine uh, sometimes. Uh, there was one time that we finished a battle between you and me. Yeah, we yes. were discussing yeah. one of the problems. That, that's right, solutions. that's right, yes. And, <laughs> and uh, for as long as we, we keep an open mind and we you know that things are not as bad as they seem yes. and that there are actually a lot of other options that we can do, especially in this hospital, in this institution, across the enterprise, then we have no reason at all to uh, really see any barriers to what we can do. Because believe you, Medical City, the staff of Medical City have what it takes to actually deliver a lot of change in healthcare. And so we can really become a true leader in healthcare, nationally and internationally. Nationally. So you have to stay healthy. We, have, we all have to stay, stay healthy. healthy. So with that, like I say, Raul, seeing you, uh, seeing you in, uh, down there uh, at the uh, BRU. And uh, 
we just actually, you don't know that, but outside the BRU, uh, we actually created a garden. Oh, wow. And we are going to open that up so that, you know, the Brew Cafe <laughs> can actually have, uh, you know, the discussions can actually be outside, which is going to be safer. There's going to be sunlight, there's going to be a breeze, and we can have coffee, and maybe we can also have wine there. That was amazing. That's amazing. So with that, thank you very much. Let's uh, thank Dr. Raul Destura, the uh, inventor, innovator, uh, infectious disease uh, specialist, uh, a leader, and uh, an entrepreneur. It's important uh, uh, that uh, the uh, Philippine government actually has uh, uh, really uh, appreciated. Thanks. Or have they? They have. They okay, have. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because if they don't, I do. And, and we do here in Medical City. Thank you very much, Raul. Thank you very much. Okay.